Now, I'm delighted to say Garold McDade is with us from Portugal. Garold, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, how are you? We're all very jealous. You are in Portugal. What's, what's it like outside of Ireland at the moment? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm definitely pretty lucky to be here. It's, uh, it's very nice. <laughs> I've been just uh, trying not to get it too sunburned. <laughs> what part of Portugal is it and why that, that particular part? That, like, obviously, that coast has some legendary waves. Uh, yeah, I'm in Costa de Caparica right now. It's um, about 20 minutes from Lisbon. So, yeah, uh, last week I was up in Ericeira for another contest, and, uh, which is about an hour away. But, yeah, this coast, stretch of coast here, is it's probably my second favourite place to be in Europe other than home. So I love coming down here, and, uh, yeah, it's... Definitely a great place. So what's the competition in Portugal this week before we talk to you about what's going on in El Salvador? Uh, this is a WQS um, World Qualifying Series for the WSL. So it's a qualifying series, a uh, string of contests um, to qualify to get onto the championship tour, which is like what you'd be like the Premier League of surfing, really. Um, so it's kind of like the Division Two league, if something kind of, if you want to yeah. say it like that. But um, yeah, so it's been off for a year, and it's pretty good to be back doing it now. Um, try and get some training in for some comps again before the Olympic qualifiers in El Salvador next week. So the Olympic qualifiers are obviously one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to you about. Surfing is in the Olympics, I think, for the first time this year. Is that right? Yeah, so... Well, it was obviously meant to be last year when, in 2020, when the Olympic got called off. But yeah, the first year now, this year. So, I mean, it's a real great thing for, to have surfing in. It really shows that it's going to be, it's a real sport and not just a, a fun thing that people do on the weekend. So yeah, it's a great thing to have surfing included in the Olympics and get it showcased around the world. How do you qualify? What What's your path to being in Tokyo this year? Uh, well pretty complicated there's so many different ways of qualifying through different things there's there was the, the top guys that are on the WC the championship tour kind of qualify from that and then there was a qualifying event two years ago um in Tokyo and now there's this qualifying event and um the, it goes down to the next four eligible people to qualify in this contest now in El Salvador, which means like if people have qualified already, it'll cancel them out. So it'll like keep going down and down through the placings to uh, whoever is the next four eligible people to qualify. And what are your chances? Uh, I'd like to think that they're good. Got to be, got to be, uh, yeah, confident and thinking that it's possible. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see see how we go. <laughs> you mentioned there, Grod, that the coast in Portugal is your second favourite stretch of coastline in the world compared to back home. So so what is the coastline back home that is your favourite? Oh, anywhere, like, between La Hinch and Bundorn, there's just, like, crazy waves the whole coast up through there. It's probably the most has the most diverse and best waves throughout the world really i think but um it gets pretty cold so it's pretty hard to be there all the time <laughs> yeah it's going to be like a completely different climate i'd imagine now for the world cup qualifier not so much in portugal uh portugal it's pretty warm it's it been like 24 25 degrees <laughs> every day it's pretty good <laughs> Oh, very jealous. Nice. It did but uh, yeah, El Salvador is going to be another level of heat. I'm. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to survive. <laughs> be having bats and sun cream. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been over to that part of the world before surfing? Yeah, I've been over there a good few times. Like, uh, I've never been to El Salvador exactly, but I've been to like Nicaragua and stuff, uh, places like that. So they have some incredible waves over there, and yeah. It's, they're surfing board shorts over there instead of big, thick wetsuits, so it's uh, <laughs> pretty excited to be going over there. Uh, you mentioned there the, the incredible coastline that you have on the west of Ireland. So, like A lot of people who were hopefuls for the Olympics and still are hopefuls for the Olympics might have just been 
put at a standstill completely with COVID because they haven't had access to their facilities or they haven't had access to, to, to training grounds and stuff like that. But for you, I'd imagine that hasn't been too much of a, a factor that stymied you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was super lucky that I've been able to keep surfing throughout the whole pandemic, that uh, I was able to travel to all the surf spots, uh, being an elite athlete. So, yeah, it was, I was so happy that I was, <laughs> there was a couple of weeks at the start that I didn't surf just because nobody really knew what was happening. But yeah, just being able to do it was great. And I don't know how it was been super tough for everybody else like all those other athletes that their um their training's got put on hold so yeah being surfing being outdoors and stuff it was it was great we, we just saw a bit of footage there from Clem McInerney of you on the wave so could you explain to somebody who knows nothing about the sport like me what will you be judged on in El Salvador what are people looking for and, and how will you qualify uh, you're judged on the maneuvers you do on a wave, so the turns, if you do a turn off the top, uh, the difficulty of the turn, if you do an air, uh, like which is kind of jumping up off the wave and then landing back down, they're, uh, they're all like high scoring maneuvers, so you're judged on, the criteria is speed, power and flow, so if you're doing maneuvers with your speed, you have power through them and your flow between the maneuvers that's going to get you the the best scores it's a uh, um yeah it's pretty much it that's it simplified down obviously there's all the different technical technicalities you can get into but um yeah that's the main criteria for the judging and to what extent can that be pre-planned I, I assume that there is a fair degree of feeling yourself into the wave when you're out there, that's obviously no two of them are, are the exact same, that you can't exactly go out with a, a concrete plan, or, or can you? I mean, depending on what the waves are like, sometimes the waves can be like pretty mechanical. Right. Like if you're at a reef break, the waves are kind of going to be the same. Obviously no wave is the exact same, but you can kind of work out which wave you want and what you want to do on the wave that's going to get you the score. Um, but yeah, then if you're at a beach break and it's all over the place, it's super hard. You're kind of just trying to look at before, pick your spot to go out where you think the best waves are going to be coming in. And um, yeah, kind of sit there and hope for the best that you're going to get the wave that you've seen when you're watching and uh, be able to perform on what you know you got to do to get through. But um, it doesn't always work like that and you have to defer from the plan that you have paddling out and just uh, make it work as the heat goes on. How many people are going to be at the, I, I mean competitors are actually going to be in El Salvador competing against you to try and qualify? Um, there's, well, there's definitely a good few countries and there's three, there's three men and three women on each team. Right. So I'm not exactly sure of how many are going to be there but there's, I'm pretty sure there's 30 countries or something like that um, that'll be gone, so, what, yeah. What would it mean for uh, you for you guys as, as athletes? In, if you qualify for the Olympics, does that automatically improve the level of funding you get from the Sports Council? Do you get any funding from, from Ireland officially? Um, right now, I, uh, I have a bit of funding from Sport Northern Ireland, um, uh, but I think due to Stefan only coming into the Olympics this year that um, I, there hasn't been funding from Sport Ireland. Um, but I'm hoping that if the Olympics does, I mean, if Stefan is now in the Olympics this year, that maybe for the next Olympics, it'll be more recognized as an elite sport and be able to get some funding from Sport Ireland. Um, but I've been super lucky with having sponsors that have been supporting me my whole, my whole life. So that's kind of keeping me going at the moment. It's, it's a tough old gig though, when you don't actually have support officially. I, I know there isn't a whole pot of cash to go around for athletes at the moment. And there's a big debate going about how much we should be funding different sports versus other ones. Um, I, I guess from your perspective, uh, being in the, the very 
uh, vanguard of, of that sport as it reaches the Olympic status, you probably do feel like you've got kind of an ambassadorial role as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, just kind of got to show that surfing deserves some funding. I think really that's my main thing, even for the future generations of kids coming from Ireland, be great to like build them up and really get Ireland on the map for surfing because we really do have some of the best waves in the world and it would just be great if we could really put it out that Ireland has some of the best surfers in the world as well and with more funding it's going to be easier for that with having kids being able to train more travel more and it'll just boost the whole sport and yeah it'd be great. Yeah I definitely think it's one of those sports that we should be supporting through official funding from the Exchequer given that it like brings tourism, it's uh, water safety, it's outdoors, anybody can do it really, you know, there's, a, there's all sorts of surf schools, it's really good for rural Ireland that is like desperately needs extra funding so I think it's a win-win. Yeah, it's great, like there's not many people that's ever gone surfing and said they didn't have fun so it's a big tourist thing, a lot of my friends and stuff survive on the tourism side of it they own surf schools and uh yeah so if we can build it up it's definitely a great thing for everybody everybody well listen good luck today and we're going to be checking in over the next while about how you're getting on in el salvador as well Garot, thanks a million for joining us this morning best of luck perfect thank you for having me no worries you can follow his story here on otbm and you can check out Garold mcdade on instagram as well we're going to follow him as i said throughout the rest of the month as he chases olympic qualification in el salvador if you want to be in touch this morning 0879-180-180 is the WhatsApp number. A reminder, OTBAM, live in association with Gillette. Good morning, start with Gillette. Giving you the confidence to tackle the day ahead. Did you notice, Owen, the cutoff point is La Hinch? I think there are some waves in Kerry, though. People definitely talk about the surf in Kerry. Mm. I saw some of them at the weekend. Didn't, uh, didn't go near them. It was a pretty blustery day on in Inch Beach when I was back there. Oh, but, nice. Uh, Can you surf an inch? Yeah, you know, there's a surf school there. Right. Um, I'm, I'm not sure there's... Uh, yeah. And, and how close like, are you to Inch? Um, about 25 minute drive. Not oh, right. Inch um, is like one of the nicest places in the world. Yeah, it's gorgeous. But like, some, if there's like even a, a little tiny gust of wind, it's like the place is uh, being attacked by a typhoon, which is obviously beautiful if you're a surfer. I'd imagine I'm not a surfer whatsoever. I don't think I've, I think I've gone surfing once maybe, uh, which is kind of uh, incredible when, when you think about it that we're in this country of amazing coastline. And as you say, all the way up from Clare to, to the south, Donegal, all these beaches that are, are legendary. And, when people talk about it, when it comes to, to waves, it's, uh, it's a there, phenomenal is, country for it. Is there an OTB challenge coming where uh, somebody can teach us two landlubbers how to surf? That's, that's what I would like this morning. Yeah, I need to learn how to swim first. That would be, that, is that important? Maybe not, actually, because you've got a board for a company. Um, I think you probably should learn to swim, Owen. I didn't realise that was... Um, right? I mean, you should learn to swim. That'd be that'd be good first challenge you to. Ah yeah, no, there was kind of like a, a callback to the swimming challenge we were doing a couple of years ago. Remember? Yeah, you could learn. You could swim there. That was only at the start of lockdown. You were swimming fine at the end of that. Yeah, no, but I was uh, absolutely terrible at it. That was uh, that was that was the joke. But um... seven fifty-five this morning. <laughs> <laughs>